Hi, my name's Kim. Um, my ham call sign is VK5FJ. Um, but what I want to talk to you about really is not specifically ham related, um, and the reason I was really wanted to make the um, the Open Radio Mini Conf go is, is that there's a lot of people who are interested in radio in one form or another. Um, the kit we built last year um, was a big collaborative project. There were several people all working in that. Um, I, was organizing, I was organizing some of the things. Mark was building hardware. David Rowe was working on uh, software. Um, we had other people organizing you know, kit building. You know, the, all of these things, you work on bits of it for the same reason that um, Andrew McDonald there, well, he's, he likes the software stack above there. That's the problem that he's trying to solve. The hardware is an inconvenient problem, right? Um, for Mark, the hardware is the, is the fun bit. You want to make that RF stuff go and do all the things. David's got that bit on the layer in there. You know, like, so we've all got our interest, interest bits. Um, these guys over here, I noticed before, they were running around with their little bots, and I was asking them about what's the cool bit of radio there, and they're going, oh, that's just Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. That's not interesting. They've got other interests. Well, that's not quite what you said before. That's okay. Um, anyhow, you can get up and talk about your other interests if you want to do that after. after it. Okay. So, um, when I set out to make the Open Radio Mini Conference happen for this year, I wanted to do more stuff with the Open Radio for a bunch of reasons. You know, I wanted to do more kits and do those sorts of things. So, a couple of months ago, put the call out for papers out. We didn't really get a lot of papers, uh, you know, talks in. So I, was, I thought, I'll put something together. And this, this was the plan, right? So first of all, the plan. Make a plan. I'm going to use the open SDR, and I'm going to do some stuff. I'm going to make some test gear, and, you know, like, you, you make a plan. Now, various things happen. Um, uh, the open radio is really designed around HF. It's, you know, 3 to 30 megs. That's really where it's focused at. I mean, it can output higher but you can't receive higher. This is the way it's designed. You take the clock, you divide it by four. So you've got 150 megs up the top, you divide it by four, and then that's really what you can receive it. You can transmit it higher. And that's, you know, it's possible to do VHF stuff. Um, and then I started going in a bit more into design and looking at the stuff, that, the, the test equipment out there that's interesting. Because when you, when you start building stuff with radio, you need to go, is that doing what I expect it's doing? And um, Andrew McDonald had that little little Yagi antenna there with a bit of bit of bit of wood and a bunch of wires hanging off it. Little Yagi antenna. I found a design on the net and I built it. Was it even remotely on the right band? Was it performing even close to what we wanted? We don't know. We haven't got the measurement gear to even come close to working on 900 megs. Um, you know, we can we'll build some stuff ourselves and things, but it's hard to do those things unless you go and buy a commercial kit. And I don't really want to go and spend. Two, three, four, five thousand dollars on commercial kit to look at 900 megs because I'm not really interested in 900 megs. But the point is, is that you can do some of this testing. You can do some of the testing, the test equipment for this yourself, if you, you know, pick a specific thing that you're interested in and going, okay, we'll focus on that. <coughs> and at the time, HF made a lot of sense to me. But you know, with the sunspots declining in this next round, it's a few years until HF is going to be picking up again in a good way. Maybe you should start looking at UHF. And so I went, all right. Open radio might not be the right thing for this uh, particular talk, even though it'll do some of the things. And it's a good radio for doing specific things. Um, so I wanted to play more with, with HF. Sorry, with VHF. So I, I built some antennas. I don't have test gear for that. So um, at the time I was looking at putting the talk together, I went, right, what kits are there out there that I can get VHF test gear to do specific things? And the short answer was, the, some radio clubs do short run kits and no one had any stuff available. Oh, I'll have to go and build one myself. That means learning Gita or you know, any of the kike had and the, doing the PCB runs and organizing that stuff and I was running out of time in a, in a big hurry. So, um, and one of our local hams, Eric, he said, look, I've designed a bunch of kits. I've got some PCBs. You're gonna have to go and source some material. All right, cool. So, um, Oops, plan B. Think about VHF, think about all of those things, uh, all the factors, and if I wanted to do kits for the conference, um, I'm going to have to go and source all this and, and work it all out. So the problem with plan B was that about that time we found out no soldering irons on campus. Without soldering irons, we can't really assemble kits. Um, okay. 
plan C. All right, so let's do VHF stuff, use the existing kits, um, work out something else for a conference talk and all those sorts of things. You know, I've got to work out what the, what the other things is. So every time I come to a conference, every time, any time I come to do anything to do with radio, you're interested in this particular thing, but then you've got to go and solve that problem to solve that problem. You end up with this big dependency chain of all of the things that you, material you've got, material that's probably you want to solve, the stuff that's available, the kits that are there, you know, and so it's always these things is making the most of what's in your junk box or make the most of the kits that are out there and all that kind of stuff. So that's what this is. It, it, this, this talk is all a little bit last minute cobbled together because it is, because I've had so many things that just didn't quite pan out. Um, and so focus, what are we testing? Because, you know, you've got to have a specific purpose for doing all of these sorts of things. And um, I've been doing a lot of stuff, I've been interested in the fox hunting, and so I wanted to do stuff with two metres and 70 centimetres and, and six metres, so there's a couple of bands there, and so I thought if I focus on two metres and, and solve that problem, then I can move on to those other things. So that's, that's kind of what, that's where I got to. All right, so you have to test, like I said, you want to test this thing for two metres, but you need all these other things. So eventually you build a piece of test equipment, and then you need to build test equipment for your test equipment. And then, you, yeah, right. So there's, there's always this recursive problem. Which is why you always end up borrowing something to test the piece of test equipment. So eventually you build a bunch of things with other people's gear and you go in that big circle because you get, you get there eventually. All right. So this is the board that Eric produced. Um, and it's an open design. It's been published. Um, VK5 HSE, you Google for that, you'll find his blog. Um, I'm pretty sure he's got the Gita files and all the, all the hardware for that is, is open um, and available. If you want to go and make your own boards, that's a thing. But if you want to buy the boards, Eric's can sort you out. Um, so there's a couple of variations here. And this is that board. It's, it's tiny, right? It's really tiny. So if we can go and find the camera, is that going to work? All right, if I can hold it still, better yet, can we do that? That's really hard to focus. Okay, so what we're looking at is two BNC connectors, obviously one on each end, and then we have a strip line in the middle, and then we have two loops. So what we're doing with the two loops, in you know, if you've done enough radio, you know about induction, and so this strip line here will induce a current in the other strip line. And then you have a couple of resistors to get the impedance right, and some sampling capacitors to store the charge, and your diode to sample the RF and give you out DC output. So what we're doing here particularly um, is we're sampling the RF going one way, and we're sampling the RF going the other. So this is a really useful thing if you want to test an antenna. So if you have antennas that, you know, you can do all sorts of things with antennas. Sometimes you have to be really precise. Sometimes you can get away with bits of wet string. Um, and sometimes you have to spend a bit of effort and time making things robust and going, you know, like thinking about exactly how you're going to use it and what it's for. And um, I've been building something for fox hunting where I want to have a source antenna that's going to be in a fairly rough environment out in the bush. So I want to have you know, reasonable materials that aren't going aren't to bust. So you need to have um, a way of detecting, is this antenna even in the band close to where you want to use it? And so you want to be able to adjust and cut the antenna to get the frequency so it's resonant. So that's really what this, this, this tool set is about. Um, it's about me taking a prototype where I get um, some nut certs and um, some aluminium and you basically sit down and build up the antennas to do very specific things. Um, this is obviously a prototype. I'm going to be building that in something a little bit more robust. Um, but you get the idea. Um, so specifically with, with this thing, you want to be able to sample the RF going in both directions. So, so you get, if you get RF coming back, the reflected power, you'll know that your antenna isn't close to resonant. So if you're going to trim your antenna, you want to be able to get it to the point where your SWR is at the lowest. The, the, the standing wave ratio of your, the RF going out and the RF coming back is at the lowest point. And so that's, there's a lot, of, a lot of mucking around there. But that's, really, that's basically what I've been up to with this, this particular kit. Um, now, what's next? All right. 
part of the, the searching through your junk box is looking for diodes because you know if you've got an SWR bridge, you're putting a diode on there to sample the RF, so you can look at the, those voltages going forwards and backwards. I spent a bit of time running around looking for specific things, and um, on the board, uh, Eric's got a bunch of different diodes which you can use, and I spent quite some time going, why am I getting really weird results? And as it turns out, I was using some diodes that were of different values here, so I was getting much higher voltages in one direction than the other, and I was, you know, spent hours going around and around in circles trying to understand what was going on. But the top three ones here um, are Schottky diodes. So they'll pick up, they'll turn on at much lower voltages. So if you know about the, you know, small signal diodes, the 4148, it's a very common one. You know, it's 0.5 volts to turn on. And so some of these other ones here, 0.1 volt, that's tiny, you pick up much lower power. So you, depending on what you're measuring, you might want to change the parts you're going in. So this is part of that journey of understanding, what am I testing? And can I test it with this thing? And you know, you go around around in circles for a while. All right, here's another go around around in circles um, thing. So if I just duck back here, you'll see the board, right? I've got a land here to put this, the incoming coax point from off the connector, I've got a ground, um, I've got the, the track on top, and underneath the board I've got an RF ground. You need the RF ground in order to get the right impedance and match up all of the things, right? Um, impedance matching is about nine tenths of radio, it seems. Um, and I built it and I put it together and I'm getting these really weird numbers where numbers are going up and down and they should be constant and all of the things. And then Mark says to me, is that RF ground grounded? <laughs> <laughs> no. So last night at about, I don't know, it was 11 p.m., we sorted out that problem. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, all my results became simple when we had nice straight voltages, you know, and it was, you know, problems go away. And so this, this, is, this is a thing with RF, it's about building the least thing you can possibly get away with, and, but RF shielding is one of those things you need plenty of, because you end up having ground loops within systems. It's, it's, it's really, really annoying. Um, and, you know, I'm a programmer, I'm a sysadmin, and I, and I live that software digital world way up there in the, in the clouds, so to speak, in comparison to the hardware. So, Diving into hardware as a thing and playing with this, this is such a different experience to what, you, what you're used to. So um, you always make lots of mistakes as a, uh, when you're starting to play with this as your, your hobby. So I've been in ham for a few years, but I've never really spent a lot of time playing, you know, at this level of stuff. So um, one of the things that I was trying to do was to characterize those diodes because you can get a box of diodes and they're all the same. They all meet the spec, except when they don't. Um, and so I spent a, f a bit of time on another board, on another, on another project, going, I need a pair of matched diodes. And so, um, where is that number? So this is the average. The top number there is the average of 20 diodes that I went through. And so they were as much as 25 millivolts different across the whole spec. Um, the silicon diodes can be all over the place. They can be in a point. 0.1 of a, a, a volt apart. So one of the things is you want to you use something like this attenuator where you can change the level of attenuation in order to understand how, the, look at the curve of the diode and go, okay, this is how linear it is or isn't. But more to the point, you want to be able to tell what the power is coming back from your antenna, right? So you can actually look at that and understand that you're actually looking at a level, uh, like, a, like a linear point within the diode so and as opposed to being right on the bottom of that range where it's turning on but it's not turning on as much as, as it, you really want it to further up the spec when you're looking at the power coming back so that you're looking at something that's linear and you understand that the graph you're getting out of the thing is actually linear and representative of the thing you're testing. So um, the stepped attenuator lets you go, okay, I want to put in one watt into the system Right, this is the system, and when I say the system, it's all those little black boxes, of blocks, black boxes of bits of RF chain that you have between your radio and, and, the, and the antenna or whatever it is that you're testing. And so, okay, um, on this particular device, I can go, okay, so this is one dB, I can measure it one watt into the system, and then I can hit, okay, put in one dB of attenuation, then I can measure that. 
and then I turn that off and I go, oh, it's 2 dB, and I step it all the way down through, you know, this one will let me do 1 through 41 dB. So I can measure that graph as I go down and have a look at how that behaves. And then I can take that back later on and I can compare that to the data I'm getting out of it, make sure that I have something that looks more linear and more representative of what we're measuring. Right, so this is, um, this is what I'm using in order to measure my antenna. Really, this is a dummy load, it's just 50 ohms, a 50 ohm dummy load, and it's reasonably flat across HF up through VHF. So in the top there, I put my handheld radio, um, it puts out one watt, um, and then of RF, and then it goes into the, you know, I can step down the, the RF, and come back through here, shove my multimeter on here, measure the voltage coming back through, and put it into my antenna. Um, obviously, for this particular talk, uh, I'm using, using this, this here. It's purely just to dissipate that energy and give me exactly 50 ohms, so I know that I'm measuring something that's 50 ohms. So in the future, when I measure an antenna, and I can go, OK, I know that this behaves like, like this, and it's not 50 ohms. I can fiddle with the antenna until it is. That's basically what we're trying to do. And that's that one with the, you keep going around in circles until you get the system right. Um, so very simply, we've got the forward voltage and the backward voltage, and you work out the, the, the voltage, the, the, standing, the standing wave ratio. Now, um, as you step down through each of the attenuations, you get the voltage out, and the catch that I've got, though, is, is that my, multi, my multimeter only goes down to one millivolt. And so one of the things I started off with this project is well, I wanted to use the, the software-defined radio, the, the open radio, and use the Arduino in order to measure the voltages. But I think you can measure, is it 40 millivolts and this number of steps that it's got available in its ADC, so you don't have enough bits for resolution to do what I was aiming to do. So that was one of those plan, you know, plan A failed, plan B, move, keep on moving. So um, Part of the trick with this is measuring the voltage. So I went back and had a look, okay, can I have find a detector that'll give me more accuracy? So there's a bunch of chips that can do that sort of thing. Um, one of the particular ones that inspired me to kind of do this project um, was, which way is the mouse gone? This, this particular project inspired me to start down this path because it's a problem that I needed to solve. And I thought, well, you know, this is, this is an easy way to do it. All the parts are there, so you order them online and some of them don't turn up in time. But basically here, this is what I'm doing. I'm saying this is a, a clock chip and here's my thing that I want to test. And then this here is the directional coupler, which is what we're building there. So the antenna there. But sometimes, sometimes what you want to do is just measure the output of this thing. So right now I don't need that. Um, right now, I wanted to measure what's coming out of here. Um, very specifically, there's this chip called the AD8310, and obviously we need to measure two things. We need to measure the forward voltage and the backward voltage. Um, I've ordered one of these guys, but it hasn't shown up, so we're kind of post-Christmas rush problem. Um, but this is trying to solve the problem that the Arduino doesn't have an ADC that'll take us down to low enough volts, and this thing will measure down... Um, I think it's 130 dBm, but I can't remember. Minus 130 dBm. All right. One of the, an the antenna that I want to build is, of, uh, is this particular one. Um, it's made for fox. You put it on the, the fox when you want to go around fox hunting. Um, and it's got two, it's called a cross dipoles. Very useful antenna for that sort of thing. Um, what's the next bit? No. All right. Here is sort of an illustration of what we're trying to measure. So on this side, we have the forward, we have the RF coming in from a radio. And on this side, we have the reflected voltage. And ideally, that should be a lot smaller, like lots and lots smaller. So you end up measuring, you end up having this standing wave of those two, uh, those two frequencies mixing. And so you want that SWR, that standing wave ratio, to be as low as possible. Um, and there's various ways to, to measure this or describe this. In ham radio, they use this, this, this ratio of, you know, one to one is perfect. You get a perfect antenna. Often you're up there in the, you know, 
1.2 to 1.3 to 1, because, you know, uh, just the way you get to build systems are not entirely uh, perfect. All right. Um, uh, the same thing. Which one's that? All right. So this, this is an example of the kind of thing that's easy to visualize once you understand what I'm trying to measure. So I've got an antenna. If I change the frequency and I look at the SWR across the band, I get a resonant frequency here. Uh, and that's, you know, under 1.1 to 1. And the two antennas there are slightly different frequencies. You can see that there's two different curves there. And as you go away from the, the resonant frequency, the SWR goes up because it's not, it's not matched at that, at that frequency. What else we got? All right, so, so, so late last night, uh, Mark and I sat down and we hacked up a little bit of code to go through and have a look at the, uh, have a look at the response of the diodes on here. And so this is, this is what we measured and this is what it's supposed to be like. So you can use this as a reference to go back and map your measuring device and get it closer back to where, you know, where the, have a better understanding of what you're looking at. Um, part of the problem with this is, is that you, as you start diving into this, you've got to start acquiring a whole lot more information about how these things work. I've been finally fi fast getting myself out of depth as to exactly how to describe a lot of these things. So I'm struggling a little bit with, the, uh, with that. But, um, and like I was saying before, you end up building test gear to test your test gear or code to build, to code to test your test gear so you can under, better understand it. And that's where the visualization of a lot of these things come in. So you can better, it's very obvious to see what you, what's going on and what's not going on. Anyhow. Five minutes, all right. Um, 10 minutes, oh dear. All right. Um, I've run out of all the things. Okay, so. If you want to come up and have a chat about um, what I've done, or um, I've got some kits available for some of the parts of some of these things, if you're interested. Um, and our next session is, I wanted it to be a discussion or a panel or something in between. So if we want to work out how we're going to do that, we can uh, we can move on to that. Now, if there was